Sustainable Sport Index details the state of sustainability at major sports venues. Kindred Black launches its Slow Beauty Refill Program. Japan's automakers unveil electric vehicles galore at the Tokyo Mobility Show. Plant-based food category grows in food service. And a new study shows measurable retailer revenue boost from resale and rental. All on this week's edition of Sustainable Life 5 in 5. My take on five highlights in sustainable living, all in under five minutes. Welcome to the next edition of Sustainable Life 5 in 5 here on the Sustainable Life channel. I'm Douglas Sabo or at Green Living Doug across social media and I'm really thrilled that you have joined me for episode number nine of this series. This is my weekly take on five highlights from the world of sustainable living all in under five minutes. Well, a lot to talk about today, but first, two, two items that uh, took place over this week uh, that you'll see on this channel. I had a chance to interview two leaders in sustainability and sustainable living and have videos up on that. The first was a conversation with Chris Coulter, the CEO of Globescan, a major sustainability research firm, and we had a chance to talk about the findings of the brand new 2023 Healthy and Sustainable Living Study, a look at over 30 different markets around the world and thousands of consumers on their journey in sustainable living. So have a look for that conversation where we talked about some of his uh, key findings, key insights, observations, what makes him hopeful. So that's uh, interview number one that took place and debuted this past week. Uh, the other is my conversation with Koan Skruziniers, uh, the founder and CEO of Sustainable Brands. Uh, Sustainable Brands just had its annual flagship event in San Diego uh, last week, and I had a chance to sit down with Koan uh, one week later to hear her reflections back on the event. What happened, key themes, the, the theme of regenerating local, how that played out, any key findings uh, and tone from the event, as well as a look at what it lies in store for Sustainable Brands as convener and as a community builder over the next number of months. So again, both of those conversations took place this past week and are both posted on the Sustainable Life channel. So give those a listen. Okay. If, by the way, friendly reminder, if you do like this content, please do uh, like and subscribe to this channel uh, and like the video. That would be terrific and much appreciated so that others will uh, be able to, to see this content as well. And as always, we'd love, love, love any comments and feedback you may have in the comments section. What are, your, what are your takes on the items that I'm going to highlight today? Or did you have any highlights of your own from the world of sustainable living in the last week? So again, use the comments section to share those. Okay, so as per usual, my five highlights today are curated from the Sustainable Life blog at greenlivingdoug.com. The blog covered a number of topics this past week, uh, sports and outdoors, beauty and personal care, mobility and electric vehicles or EVs, uh, food with a focus on plant-based, and the retail and re-commerce sector. So those are the five themes and my five highlights are pulled from those. So let's go ahead and give it a start for the stopwatch. Getting better each week at getting very close to five minutes. Let's see how we do today. All right, let's go ahead and give that start. Okay, highlight number one, sustainable sports venues. So this was a piece from the Sports Business Journal looking at the findings of the recent sustainable sport index from Aptim, a sustainability consulting firm. This was a study that looked at uh, how does sustainability play out at major sports venues, um, 41 self-reporting pro and college venues spanning 15 different leagues, a couple different findings from the index. Venues with sustainability staff on board has grown from 24% to 56%. 80% of these venues now have LED lighting. 64% of venues are reporting that they have actually received greater sponsorship revenue uh, because of the sustainability program. So many opportunities still to advance sustainability and reporting, climate adaptation, waste diversion, and others. Um, but really good to see the progress in sports venues. Why did I choose it? Well, first, the overall popularity of sports. Uh, some have said athletes are the number two influencers after Hollywood celebrities. Uh, so engaging the public through sports venues is a great opportunity to bring fans into the sustainable living and sustainable movement. Okay, highlight number two, beauty refill programs. 
This was a piece from Trend Hunter, uh, who did a spotlight on the slow beauty brand called Kindred Black. Now, Kindred Black has recently launched its new slow beauty refill program. And so what it is, is it enables consumers to refill uh, their and replenish their products, the Kindred Black products, without needing to get multiple versions of their signature blown glass bottles, which are quite beautiful, uh, referred to as being heirloom quality glass bottles. Uh, so this is great to see that Slow Beauty, uh, the Slow Beauty collection from Kindred Black is rolled out to about 75% of its products are refillable. Uh, and why is this important? Because we talk about sustainable living needing to be attractive uh, and uh, engaging of consumers, so attractive, this artful glass pieces. Refill can be beautiful. You get to uh, have the environmental benefits, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions for the beauty industry, natural resource savings, waste aversion, etc. And it helps normalize this concept of refill. So check that piece out. Okay, highlight number three, Japanese electric vehicles unveiled. Uh, AP story covered the Tokyo Mobility Show uh, with a major headline that Japanese automakers are unveiling EVs galore. Uh, Mazda is debuting a plug-in EV sports car. Honda is featuring its Prelude sports car uh, EV concept. Toyota has a Lexus concept. Nissan has four EV concept cars. So. Why did I choose this one? Well, first of all, there's been some perception that Japanese automakers, uh, notably Toyota in particular, have been this, somewhat behind on battery electric vehicles. So this is a story of progress among Japanese automakers. Also, it's a, uh, and, and the more diversity of offerings, the better. It's also an opportunity for market catch up. About 5%, less than 5% of car sales in Japan are uh, EVs right now. US is under 10%, China's about one third. So, to see progress in the Japanese auto, make, uh, auto manufacturing sector for EVs is great to see. Hey, highlight number four, plant-based food service growth. Veganomist covers the financial results of Webstaurant Store. This is one of America's leading food service suppliers. It tends to focus more on the smaller independent establishments, not the major food service outlets that are served by folks like Cisco and US Foods. Uh, According to this coverage, the plant-based category grew 110% year over year for Webstaurant Store uh, from 2022 to 2023. They anticipate continued rapid expansion in 2024. They have over 750 vegan items from 150 different plant-based manufacturers, often smaller, more innovative brands that are just emerging. So I've often talked about, I chose this because I often talk about plant-based in food service as being an opportunity. Perhaps sales have flatlined in retail and other channels. Uh, and so great to see both the growth in food service as well as this particular supplier spotlighting those new and emerging players. Okay, final headline, re-commerce revenue boost. This was coverage of a new re-commerce survey out from Barclay Card Payments and Development Economics, looked at 400 British retailers that were surveyed and their uptake of re-commerce, secondhand and rental. According to the study, 46% of these retailers now provide for resale, uh, most commonly in fashion, home goods, electronics. 82% of those offerings saw a revenue boost. And finally, uh, about 49,000 jobs in the UK are seen as attributable to re-commerce with an estimated £7 billion revenue in the last 12 months. So I chose this continued momentum in e-commerce, also demonstrating it contributes to economies through jobs and revenue and contributes to the business growth of retailers. Five minutes on the dot. Thank you so much for joining. Again, I hope you enjoyed those uh, five highlights. A lot going on in sustainable living. Again, check out the two interviews if you're interested in the uh, sustainable brands recap or the uh, healthy and sustainable living study. Also, use the comment section and uh, share your thoughts. And if you like this content, please, again, like and subscribe. I am Douglas Sabo or at Green Living Doug across the social media channels. Uh, so wonderful to see you again. Please join me next time on the next edition of Sustainable Life 5 and 5.